This short video will discuss how to paraphrase effectively. When incorporating sources into your writing, a good way to do this is to paraphrase the source. In fact, paraphrase texts should make up the majority of your incorporated sources. Paraphrasing means that you're using the idea from the original text, but you're using your own words to express it. Paraphrasing is beneficial as it helps you to understand the original source and furthermore, it highlights your understanding of the source to the reader. It also allows your own voice to come through in your writing. A well-paraphrased text needs to have all of the following qualities. First, it needs to be original, and this means that the phrasing should be completely different from the original text. You'll use different words, different sentence structure, even different punctuation. We'll talk more about how to do this in a little while. It also needs to be accurate, this means that in changing the phrasing of the idea, you need to check to make sure that the idea itself was not changed. It's always a good idea after you've finished paraphrasing to go back to the original text and make sure that you haven't altered what the author or authors have said. Speaking of authors, it's important to cite and reference. Even though the phrasing of the idea is unique to you, the thought or idea still belongs to the original author. If you fail to give them credit for their idea, this can be considered a form of academic misconduct. So, it's essential to cite and reference your paraphrased text correctly. If you're not sure how to cite and reference, check with your course handbook or your lecturer and find out which referencing style you need to use. And also note that the university library contains guides for different citation styles. Finally, be sure that your paraphrased text is grammatically correct and that it's written in an academic register. This means that you should be using formal language with subject-specific vocabulary where appropriate. Here are some tips to help you paraphrase a text. First, identify the words which can't be changed. Then, find synonyms, change the word class, and change the sentence structure. I'll note here that you should take all of these steps when paraphrasing, not just one. For example, if you only re replace a few words in the original text with synonyms, this won't produce a paraphrased text which is notably different from the original. If there's too much similarity between your text and the original one, this will be flagged as a possible case of plagiarism. Let's examine these tips in a little more detail. First, you should go through the text to identify which words can't be changed. These could be subject-specific words or keywords which are central to your topic. This can also include jargon, which are special words used within a profession or field. Additionally, you can't change proper nouns, for example, names of people, places, events, or dates. Take a look at the example. Let's say that you're writing an essay about how climate change has affected the automobile industry, and you want to include the following information about Elon Musk and his company Tesla. Take a moment and read this sentence and see if there are any words which you would not change when paraphrasing. First, you can't change Elon Musk's name, nor his age. However, if his age isn't relevant to our topic, then you might choose not to include that information. This is a good place to point out that you only need to include relevant information when paraphrasing. Moving on, you wouldn't change the numbers or figures in a text, so we'd leave the $100 billion as it is. However, again, this may not be essential information for our purposes. Additionally, Tesla is the name of the company, which can't be changed. And finally, fossil fuels. Well, that may be a key term for our topic, so we'd leave that unchanged. Now let's focus on finding synonyms. Synonyms are words which carry the same meaning or a similar meaning to the original word. When selecting a synonym, you may want to consult a thesaurus. It works like a dictionary, but instead of definitions for a word that you look up, it gives lists of synonyms. However, it's important to select your words with care. You need to be sure that you select the correct meaning of the word, but you also need to consider formality and connotation. For example, going back to our previous sentence, let's say that you're looking for a synonym to replace the word fortune. All of the following words might come up as possible synonyms, destiny, predicament, and wealth. 
Yet only one word, wealth, has the correct meaning for the context of the sentence. Additionally, when considering formality, you want to select a word that expresses the idea clearly, but in an academic register. Note, sounding academic doesn't mean that you have to find the longest and most obscure term available. Again, you want to aim for clarity. In this case, wealth strikes the right balance as it's not informal, but it's not overly formal. It's clear. Finally, you'll want to make sure that the connotation of the word, which is the feeling behind the term or the imagery associated with the term is appropriate. Take the words wealth and opulence. They both fall under the same heading in a thesaurus, but opulence is usually used to describe how great wealth is spent in a luxurious way, whereas wealth only indicates an abundancy of something, in this case money. Because we don't know from the original text how Elon Musk has spent his money, it would be best to use wealth. Perhaps a clearer example of this would be the words nosy and curious. Nosy and curious both carry the same meaning, but if you call someone nosy, they're likely to get offended. Yet, if you call them curious, they may not. Likewise, if you call someone cheap, it can be taken as an insult, but if you call someone thrifty, it is not. As a note of caution, it's important to know that simply changing a few words in a text is not considered paraphrasing. As you can see in the example, much of the text is still the same, and as mentioned earlier, this can be considered plagiarism. Therefore, it's important to change as many words as possible. And furthermore, you will also want to change the word class and the sentence structure. This brings us to word class. When changing the word class, you change the function of the word within the sentence. So you might change a verb to a noun or a noun to an adjective, keeping the root of the word the same. For a clear example, look at the word caution. It can be used as a noun, as in one should use caution when walking on dimly lit streets at night. It can be used as a verb, as in the website cautions people about walking on dimly lit streets at night. It can be changed to an adjective, which is a word that describes a noun. So as an example, one should be cautious when walking on dimly lit streets at night. Or it could be used as an adverb, which is a word that describes a verb, as in people walk cautiously. This is useful when you can't find an appropriate synonym for a word. Let's go back to our example sentence. In this case, we may want to change the word class of investors. In the original sentence, it's used as a noun, but what would it look like if we changed it to a verb? You will notice that we needed to rearrange the phrasing to accommodate the new grammar. This then brings us to our next step, which is about changing the sentence structure. When you change the sentence structure, you can change the order of the words and ideas and the clauses within the sentence. Looking at our example, here's our original sentence. Each clause has been given a separate color. Here's a sentence after rearranging the structure. Looking even more closely, you can see how it's possible to change the word order within the clause. Now, let's put all of these steps together to produce a fully paraphrased version of the original sentence. Here's our original, and here is our paraphrased version. According to Nate and Kalu, Tesla's role in reducing the global dependence on fossil fuels has led to an increase in people investing in the company's stock and, in turn, a significant rise in Elon Musk's wealth. One point which you'll note in our paraphrased version is that a narrative citation style has been used. This works the citation into the grammar of the sentence. You can use a variety of reporting verbs to help you do this, such as states, claims, shows, notes, as in Choi and Jones note that, or Patel argues that, both narrative and parenthetical citation styles are acceptable, and it's good to use variation to make your writing more engaging. 
In review, to make a well paraphrased text, you need to make sure that you've addressed all of the points. In fact, you can use this as a checklist for your own paraphrased texts. Check to make sure that your paraphrased version is notably different from the original. Furthermore, it's important to make sure that it's accurate and that the facts or ideas have not been altered. Importantly, check to be sure that you've correctly cited and referenced the text. This could be easy to forget when the phrasing is completely different from the original, but the idea still belongs to the original authors and they have to be acknowledged. Finally, check to make sure that your paraphrased text makes sense grammatically and that it's in an academic register. As a final thought, it's good to keep in mind that paraphrasing is a skill and like any skill, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. For more information on integrating sources into your writing, see our video on direct quotes.